Bon dia, bon dia. How's it going? So, big day today. Great part of this day. So, we've got up at half seven. As you can see, it's already boiling up. It's only half eight. Done about four or five vines so far. There's only about 150 to go. So as you can see, it's a big pile of grapes, and we can't fit any more in the bucket. So I'm going to put you in the bucket, or am I going to get in the bucket? I'm going to take it in turns in the bucket. It's very full. Maybe we're both going together. <laughs> so yeah, so we need to press all this down a little bit and see where we're at. We still probably have another 20 vines to pick, um, but we may face a dilemma of my plan was, I don't know if you can see it in the dark over there, there's a small 100 litre tank, which is how we did it last year. No, the small 100 litre tank is the one we did last year, but we have this big 350 litre tank. I don't know what to do at the moment, but we will see. Right, we both have shower cleaned feet, so don't worry about it. It's one of the funny things about winemaking is you would never know whether the wine you drink or buy from the supermarket was pressed or stomped, crushed by foot. You wouldn't know unless you go to the winery and you see it first hand.
Right then, pear cider. Never made it before, so this is a bit experimental. Gonna go for full natural version, no added yeast, no added sugar. Ferment it to dryness and see where we're at. These are the pears I picked a few weeks ago. They feel mostly okay. I think some of them are a bit harder than others. These are the two varieties we've got. I don't know if any of you guys can tell me the difference between them. Here we have uh, Alpadrina Mountain Spring Water. So we'll add this to it. So we are on day three of fermentation. Um, so far, all going well. Um, the only predicament we've got is we've got a lot of grapes. So we've got too much for this tank, but not enough for this tank. And as you can see by the space in here, we don't really have much room for another ferment. So these are the grapes. As you can see, some of them are still not quite broken down, but they are really soft now. Now what we have to do is twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, we have to do what we call punching down, which is basically a good mix. So as you can see, all these grapes are now facing the air. So what we need to do is get them down. As you can see, there's quite a lot of action happening underneath these. Cover it again.
So one thing I have also been working on this summer because it's too hot to be outside is I'm completely rebranding my illustration work which I am so excited about and I will share more as I kind of finish developing it. I'm hoping to launch it on the 4th of October and it's going to be called Calm Lines and yeah I have lots of ideas for it but I wanted to quickly let you know that I have reopened up my Etsy print shop and there's like a huge discount on there at the moment on my old work. I'm not sure what's going to make it through to my new collection um, but yeah I'll leave a link in the description if you wanted to check it out. There's some absolute bargains in there. And the other thing I've been doing over the summer is getting on top of my taxes because <laughs> I did it pretty wrong the first year and when you first move somewhere it's really difficult well I found it very difficult to know like where to find an accountant and how to do all the system and stuff so I just wanted to give a really big shout out to my accountant Talmo and um, I would highly recommend him and if you are trying to sort that out yourselves then yeah I just thought I would leave a recommendation because it is like one of the things I found really difficult to find. He'll also help with um, NIFs and bank accounts and I think he works not just in Portugal but I'll leave his website below too um, but yeah he's been an absolute saviour for me and it's such a relief now to know like that that's all taken care of and uh, yeah I'm not gonna get into any trouble not doing my taxes correctly because even living off grid and feeling like you're living a simpler life there is one thing that is unavoidable and that is taxes and an in 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 income So we have had a few exciting upgrades in the kitchen which I wanted to share with you. We bought back our, where is it, here, um, barista kettle when we went back to North Wales because we finally have enough power to run a kettle and that is all thanks to Bluetti who are also sponsoring this video. If you've been a long time viewer of ours you know we absolutely love them. They have really transformed our lives here. So they sent us a couple of months ago their AC500, the Witherby 300S battery and that was an absolute game changer for us because it can just hold so much of the solar um, energy that we can capture on sunny days. But we are now moving, thankfully, into the colder dark part of the year so the amazing thing about the ac500 is that you can add up to i think it's six b300s batteries the one thing we did say would make a huge difference to our lives and now that we can power it we have a fridge freezer it's been like yuan's biggest goal since we've lived here is to be able to have a cold beer i will go over some of the finer points about it now so that you have some more information. So the AC500 has a 5000 watt continuous pure sine wave output, meaning you can run your fridge, aircon, washing machine, wood chipper and dishwasher all at the same time. 
The B300S batteries each add 3072 watt hours, which is great for long periods without sunshine, though there are many ways to recharge them, not only via its potential 3000 watt solar input, but also via AC, whether that's from a petrol generator or an on-grid plug socket. There are so many different outlets in the AC500, and the B300S also has its own USB outlets. For us, Bluetti stands out for quality in the industry, and they offer a four-year warranty. If you'd like to find out more, then you can head to the link in our description below. So if we were to currently, at this current rate, bump these two up, yeah. then we could fit another one horizontally at the bottom. But like you say, that obviously is... No, no, just your hands now. It's quite a nice job. Mm. Still there. Oh, feel free to pop any you want, yeah. Today could be the day, which is one of possibly the best days of the year, that it rains. The first rain after the whole summer without it. I can't remember when the last day was. <sighs> if it doesn't rain, I'm going to cry. And if it does, <sighs> I'm going to be just so happy. The ground is so dry and uh, it really means summer's over if it rains. So. Have you seen your drain pipe? Oh. <laughs> you might need to uh, close the door. <laughs> well, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Diogo's still outside. Is he? Double rainbow.
What's going on with Toto? soggy So because we've used our drain pipe for the pipe going into the well <laughs> here around there, created this little contraption which worked really well apart from if we got there would also be lots of olive leaves on the roof so it got blocked at first but yeah there's a big olive tree there but we've managed to collect some water in here it's a very dirty IBC tank. We need to get it better rigged up, but we didn't want to not capture some today.
Good morning. We have had a very, very wet and cold weekend. It's been the perfect remedy for after summer. We always feel really exhausted after the summer from the heat, kind of feel a bit burnt out. So it's been a real nice slow weekend. I'm feeling recovered and full of energy. Excuse our water filter just turning on. Um, I'm not sure how recovered you are, is because he's been working hard on wine. <laughs> Um, Chaos. <laughs> I'm actually just heading out to collect a load of water that we need for the next step in the winemaking. <laughs> So, <laughs> what are you up to? Well, as from previous problems that we had, we found that the cheapest and probably most exciting alternative was to buy two of these. So, I had to learn how to uh, hydrate one, which I've never done before. It's been quite a steep learning curve, quite a lot of panic, lots of not doing, not knowing what we're doing. So today is day 13 since harvest. So it's the longest I've managed in the three years that we've been learning this process. The Holy Grail is 14 days. That's what I've always wanted to do for a red wine because you get a nice big body on it and makes a really nice wine. So we're gonna, we're gonna press tomorrow, which will be day 14. So, so far, so good. Like it's nice and fruity. There's no taints on it. If you've probably noticed, we've been trying to work on these things. So these are two 60 litre chestnut barrels. Wine drinkers amongst you will probably be more accustomed to oak being used with wine. But in this area particularly, chestnut grows quite readily. So historically they used to use chestnut barrels. So I figured I'd go down that route just to be a little bit more an ode to the Bay Rabai Shah winemaking region. So um, <laughs> these are brand new ones. They're only 70 euros each, so not too expensive and quite a nice way of storing the wine because I can leave the wine in here for two or three years and it's quite easy to move, whereas these big steel tanks are actually quite difficult to move once they're full. So I've had to learn how to hydrate them because when they come brand new, as you see in some of the footage, the, the gaps between the staves are quite big. And I mean, I did, I did kind of know this before we bought them, but I didn't really realize quite how much of a thing it was. So it's been absolute chaos trying to work it all out. Hot water, hot water's the key for any budding winemakers out there. It really makes a huge difference to how quickly it swells up. And then obviously that saves you quite a lot of stress and panic thinking that you've not wasted your money on rubbish barrels. The smell inside them is really really nice so hopefully it will all go to plan. So another thing that happened this week is we found a little kitten in our barn. <laughs> I just walked past and he was sat in the doorway. And who are you? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Bravely, his ones. I have no idea where he's come from, and 
as adorable as he is, we're already struggling a little bit with the three cats, especially Zhao and Samal, the two boys, fight quite a lot. I think they're mostly play fighting, but it's very noisy. And having a third, he's a male, the little kitten, I think it would just be a little bit too much. <laughs> and um, the, yeah, the amount we've spent on vet bills and food the last three years, we kind of feel like maybe we have enough animals. So we've obviously been taking care of him. We've got him booked in to the vet for his chaps and to check he's all okay. Yeah, I wanted to share in case there is anyone in the Castello Branco region that is looking to add a kitten to their family. He is really lovely. You can pick him up and he'll just like purr sat in your chest and the temptation to keep him is obviously there, but I think it's just, it's too much. Four cats is, is a lot. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone is, is looking to adopt a kitten, our email is in the description. <laughs> Look at his markings. Mm, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. He's very little and very skinny. With a very fat little belly. He's <laughs> probably got worms, haven't you? You are cute. Where have you come from? <laughs> Who do you belong to? So there's no microchip. He is unneutered. He's obviously very small. You two do not need to be nasty to do. This was you once you were out. <laughs> Just the order of things. You're a bully. Yeah, yes. I'm just oh, I'm gonna fall over. I'm just finishing up the editing now and I had to edit myself down quite a bit when I was talking about the fridge because I just was going on and on about how amazing it is. But it really is. And we were actually gifted this fridge, so I really wanna say a huge thank you to one of you guys who helped us to buy it. Yeah, it has made such a huge difference. And after editing myself down a bit, I did think I wanted to say that quite a few times we, you know, people say to us, you know, how do you kind of like live without these conveniences, not having running water and stuff like that. But it becomes something that just becomes a part of your routine and you kind of um, really get used to just having certain rhythms. But the biggest difference you find is when you actually then have that added back into your life after so long without and you realise just what a convenience it is like having the running water in the kitchen and now having a fridge it was just it's just like the way we can like plan our meals and store food and I'm excited about what I'm going to be able to do with the produce from the garden because of it and yeah I did I did have a big uh, gush about how amazing a fridge is but it really is like the things humans have made are are just incredible and yeah being able to like slowly add them back into our lives is just it really fills you with gratitude and I think that's one of the beautiful things about us living this way is the small things that we just like love that you kind of we were taking for granted living in a normal house gratitude for those little things just makes your your life better I think. I've spent far too much time in front of a computer the last few weeks doing the time-lapse videos. Thank you so much for all your lovely comments on them. I absolutely loved making them but I have very square eyes and now editing this I'm so ready now that summer is over to be getting outside more. We're actually going off to see our good friends Luke and Sarah right now. They've also been working on some amazing time-lapse videos if you wanted to go check them out too. I think it's just really nice to see all the progress in one place that you kind of forget over a whole year. You kind of feel like you've not moved forward but you have. Each day, you know, slowly you, you add to it. But anyway, <laughs> I felt a bit out of practice of vlogging because doing the time-lapse videos kind of gave us a two-week break off that. So I hope watching this video hasn't felt as chaotic as it felt editing it. And yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed it and oh, I'm just so excited now for everything to start moving forward again and me not having to stare at a screen too much 
We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.